I decided to do a reading vlog. Uh, I basically wanted to make September the month for manga because I have a lot of manga that I have not finished some of them. Like for instance, this one is one of my favorite series. I have not finished this yet. And so I kind of want to get into it and finish it and some of the other ones too. I collect a lot of BL boy love mangas and I haven't read some of these and I kind of feel bad. <laughs> uh, so that's the plan. Um, it's not strictly manga for this whole month. I am going to reorganize this because I kind of have to because I keep rebuying the same manga over and over and that's not healthy for me or my wallet. Uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna do that. Um, while I'm organizing it, I'm gonna do a time lapse. I'm gonna be listening to an audiobook on my tablet which is Love and Other Disasters by An Antina Kelly. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I tried to read it physically. I just could not get into it, but the audiobook is really good. So if you want a good like romance audiobook, that one. Um, I was actually at work when the sex scene happened and I felt super awkward because I'm like, no one can hear what's happening. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so before I start reorganizing my uh, manga bookcase, uh, I wanted to show what I have bought recently in the past like month or so. Um, it's mostly mangas that have come in or have been restocked at my bookstore. So yeah. Also, it's, it's kind of funny because I haven't been reading any manga and we're already like 10 days into September. And so I'm like, yeah, you know what, instead of like actually reading manga, um, I'm gonna reorganize my manga section. <laughs> uh, yeah, so procrastination at its fullest here. Um, yeah. But to be fair, I'm trying to f finish Love and Other Disasters first before I jump into one. I did start one manga. Um, so yeah, so let's get into my book haul and then into rearranging my manga. So the first two books I got are horror and that is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoken and Other Misfortunes. This is a short story collection. Uh, I heard these are like really messed up and really scary. So I'm kind of intrigued to read this for Halloween. The other one is Nothing by Black and Teeth. This is currently $5 at Barnes and Noble. So I highly recommend getting that at the cafe. Uh, this is like a retelling of a haunted uh, revenge story about a ghost who takes their revenge on a wedding. Uh, no, during a wedding and it's the families who betrayed the ghost. So spooky. I'm gonna leave my manga for last. <laughs> the next book uh, is Devil House by John John Dernelli? Dernell? Dernell. He's the author of Wolf and White Dan and Universal Harvester. So I was very intrigued by the cover of this. This was a cover by, not by the story, um, but the story seems interesting. And so this story is a little spooky because he's like a writer who does true crime. And so what I kind of, um, after I bought it, I read what it was about. Um, and it's about the satanic panic of the 1980s. And it kind of gave me sinister vibes with Eve Hawking or Eve Hawk. Um, so I was like, oh, that looks really interesting. At first, because of the font, I thought it was the same guy who wrote Godfather, but I'm like, is the dude even alive, you know? Uh, so very excited for Halloween reads. Uh, the next one is The Ballad of Pri Pri I'm not gonna even say Graves, okay? Alex Jenkins, and this got me, well, cover, and then the inner flap it has like a like a different universe of new orleans and i thought that was cool it kind of gives me a uh, halloween town meets princess Todd, uh meets uh princess and the frog uh so i'm really excited to read this especially with the whole new magic realm i don't do fantasy a lot but i heard this was more sci-fi so i'm kind of intrigued and i really love this cover uh, the next one is um, Temperature of Me and You. Uh, this was strictly the fact of uh, 
what it says uh boys who literally too hot to handle is what got me and it's lgbt and i was like i must have this this is too cute i am very intrigued to read this i'm intrigued to read all my books and then my prize and possession that just recently came out is stephen king's fairy tale i will be reading this soon probably with my manga during this reading vlog um i'm waiting for my friend to get their copy of fairy tale because they got the book depository the uk edition um granted i do want it but at the same time this fits my stephen king collection than that one so i was like i don't know uh but i cannot wait especially since joe hill and stevie king put their own artwork into it so i cannot wait now to my obsession to the problem why I'm sitting in front of here is the manga that I recently bought. Um, so I am currently reading this one, which is, dear Lord, how do you pronounce that? <laughs> Kati Koi? Ka Ka you know what? I'm just going to show it up close. Uh, it's essentially a guy who owns a uh, coffee shop that sells sweets and he falls in love with one of the patrons who comes constantly and he believes this dude is in love with him and then he finds out the only reason that he keeps staring at him is because he had a crush on his co-worker who is female and so he tries to root for him and all that stuff and so far it is adorable i cannot wait to finish this i am up to chapter four so yay. next i have is change world volume two um i don't know anything about it besides that it's bf that's all i got i do have the first one somewhere and you put them together next i have coyote volume one uh this one i did read um this is basically a guy who is a werewolf and he's trying to not get it trying to not expose himself but he ends up um being seen by a pianist and they have like this love affair and they can't so it's like a romeo and juliet but it's a monster version of it so monsters versus humans the next one, the next three is the same series. So I have Hangar 1, 2, and 3. And this kind of reminds me of, uh, what's it called? There is an anime that I saw a really long time ago. I can't remember the name of it. And it's basically about vampires and humans fighting each other. And they're trying to, like, stop end of the world. And they basically um, take down archangels to open gates. And this is kind of what it reminded me, but a gay version of that. Um, I'm kind of intrigued because these look kind of like they are chained to like monsters or something. I'm not sure. I just saw in the back of it that was BL and I was like, I want to read it. And then I realized the rest of the series was there. So like it, it, it was meant to be. The next one is Saki and my own you know what i'm gonna stop talking because i cannot pronounce these names i just know it's two best friends who are actually lovers uh this guy loves bl and doesn't realize the guy he's talking to about bl is in love with him and so he keeps like thinking that when they go out to hang out that this would have been like a great bl um manga scene and he doesn't realize that the more he talks the more that the guy has ideas to take him on dates and so this is book six in their relationship i'm not gonna go into what happens to it because like i said this is a spoiler next i have seaside strangers volume four uh this one i did read the first one it's very sad it's basically just like growing up to uh people to high school friends i don't really want to call them friends they know they're acquaintances and they kind of have a fling and then one of them decides to leave this island and it's just really sad about growing up and then learning your sexuality and stuff um so i'm kind of intrigued to see what happens in this volume because i only read one and i don't know how it's going to continue because it's just really depressing and really sweet at the same time ah. next thing i got is a standalone which is there are things i cannot tell you uh i am not sure what this one is about i it i'm assuming it says opposites attract so i'm assuming jock and nerd fall in love and then it just they're trying to keep it a secret probably possibly now the next one is this one which i'm not gonna even try and this is volume two i just realized i do not have volume one of this uh so i'm very guilty of that next is therapy game restart volume two this 
series I love so much because he is a brat and he's in love with his best friend and he does not like when his best friend goes out on dates with his, with girls or has a girlfriend and everything and he won't tell him that he has a crush on him and I think it's like the cutest thing ever because uh, the best friend is like so like oblivious he chooses his best friend over his girlfriend so I'm like dude you, you have a thing for your best friend and your best friend is trying to break you guys up so i was like yes so i have cherry magic number five this is a very hilarious series because it's about a 30 year old virgin who uh when he turned 30 years old he could start hearing other people's thoughts and the guy who he thought was just bothering him a lot ends up just having sexual fantasies of fantasies about him and then he can actually hear them and see them and it's just funny because uh he, he obviously he doesn't know that he can read his mind so it's just funny because he's like he's flustered and at the same time he's like i don't i'm not gay and then he goes like am i gay <laughs> it's just it's really cute next ones i have is a series called don't call me and the first one is don't call me dirty and the other one is don't call me daddy and it's just about two uh people who essentially uh meet in a really rough circumstance and take care of each other and it's just really cute because they are like total opposites they think the worst of each other and then when they realize like oh you're just down on your luck same as me so i was like this is so cute i actually read um one of the short stories before and one of the other mangas and i was like yes the next one is the cat proposed um this one, I I don't know why, but I keep thinking of, uh, what's it called, that Tim Burton's movie, The Bride, um, something, The Corpse Bride. Uh, essentially, this guy, I guess, proposes to a cat, and the cat turns to be human, and he unleashes, like, this thing, sort of like The Princess of Frog, where she kisses the frog, and he becomes a prince, sort of like that. So I'm kind of intrigued, because I heard the cat is, like, seriously... <laughs> <laughs> just depraved uh so i can't wait to read that one either the next one is share my destiny uh this is a, another food one this is about a f uh, guy who is a french um what's the word pastry no bakery french bakery and across the street is a guy who uh does Japanese coffee and they kind of go hand in hand but the owners don't like each other quote unquote because it's mostly the guy who owns the French bakery does not like the guy who does the Japanese coffee uh, but it's just so sweet because they're he believes they're enemies when in truth they're not so it's supposed to be enemies to lovers but I don't see it as enemies to lovers because they both have to hate each other and the Japanese coffee owner doesn't hate him <laughs> he's just amused about how like uh, persnickety he is uh, so I wrote or read this. This is so cute. And yeah, so let's get into it while I'll listen to my audiobook for Love and Other Disasters. Hopefully I'll finish it. Um, well, this. Hopefully I finish it, not the book. I still have a good few chapters to go. So let's do this. Also, I forgot I had two more called The Vampire and His Pleasant Companies 1 and 2. I, yeah, I just keep finding them everywhere. <laughs> So let's get into it and let's finish Love and Other Disasters, hopefully.
finished chapter four and a plot twist has ensued. <laughs> so essentially this manga is about a guy who owns a cafe slash bakery. He falls in love with one of the guys who is like a college student and he constantly always comes into the restaurant and is always watching him. But then he realizes that after talking to the guy, the guy was not watching him, but watching his coworker, who's a female, and he has a crush on her, or that's what he says. And so he tries to help him out. And so they go on a pretend date. And I'm starting to think maybe he said that because he didn't know if he was gay or not. And then the person that the cafe owner, uh, essentially his best friend, and he's telling him that he has this crush on him. And they're like, wait, so this whole entire time your best friend who was there with you had a thing for you? And you've been telling him about all these other men that you've been crushing on? That's messed up. But then again, I've read other mangas that do the same thing where the best friend says that they're in love with them, but then it just helps make the, pers the crush jealous because then it makes it seem like they're desirable sort of if that makes sense so the barista best friend is in love with him but the barista was in love with the college student who would always come to his thing so it's a love triangle now or not at all because we don't know if the college student likes the barista i i don't know what's going on <laughs> so i uh, i'm gonna continue i'm gonna i'm uh, yeah i'm just shook it to the core uh, about the thing. So I love these cute little short mangas. Um, yeah, so let's do it. Oh, okay. So I just finished it. Um, this is such a cute story. Uh, love triangles all around. I'm kind of curious if there's gonna be like a sequel or like a continuation short story with the best friend. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was so cute and the guy is so innocent, he doesn't even know. Oh, it's just really cute. And funny thing is, because I was trying to remember why I got some of my, uh, BLs, and it's because it's in the back of the books, they promote them, and that's why I'm like, I wanna read it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so if you want something really sweet, it's not smutty, well, they do have some, like, sexy time in here, but it's not, like, the whole faces like some BLs. Uh, it's mostly just cute miscommunications, love triangles, and just, yeah, it's just cute. And lots of really pretty designs of food. So, yeah. Eek! That's it. Okay, let's go to another one! <laughs> Okay, so day one is done. Well, I'm cutting it because I am tired. Uh, I ended up finishing three books. Uh, the first one was manga, and then I ended up finishing Love and Other Disasters, the audiobook, so that was great. I highly recommend that one too if you want like a queer book. It has a queer character and a non-binary character. I like how it came out. Um, I don't know, It's it's just, yeah, I don't know. It was cute. It, it was a typical romance that wasn't like a typical standard boy meets girl kind of thing, but like it has food in it and it's really cute and it's queer and non-binary and yeah, I don't know. I found it adorable. Uh, it does have smut, so if you're into that. Uh, so yeah, uh, I really enjoyed that. The other one is um, We Have Till Monday by uh, I think Cara D. Um, I wasn't really a big fan of that one. It was kind of just boring. Um, hers is more, that story was more of a um, realism. No, that's not right. <laughs> it's just, it was like more real life story. Just like a plain, like a fluffy real life story. Um, shouldn't really say real life. It's quote unquote, just like everyday life. Um, it was really cute. I did like it. Um, I just kind of found it really boring. Cara D has a really good writing style and I really do like her writing, but she has a tendency to do this thing where it's just a lot of filler and it does not have, it did not have a good pace. Um, but that's amazing. 
uh, not a general thing. She's a really great rotter. Highly recommend. Uh, and then I ended up picking up Dick Fight Island. Uh, this is straight up just porn in a manga. And I'm actually enjoying it. <laughs> so essentially what this is, is about a competition uh, that happens every four years where the seven clans come together to basically have a tournament to see who's going to be king. So sort of like a presidential thing. Uh, the reason I'm laughing is because how they do this is essentially the first person who um, releases their pleasure <laughs> Uh, loses and so it moves on to the next um, people who are competing. Uh, the funny thing about this is they are very into showing their butts so that's kind of how they show respect is wiggling their butts in front of like higher people and I was like oh dear oh my yeah oh my oh my it's really funny, uh, especially because the main character kind of um, goes to school in sort of like our world, and he I don't I don't know how to explain it. It's basically seven islands that are away from civilization. One of the civilizations um, works with the outside world, which is like what our world, our society is, and so he comes back, and then he goes like you know there's like gay people out in the world and there's a scene in it where he goes like that's like having sex and i'm like yeah that 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 is sex that's that's sexual education um when you don't actually have the funny for it <laughs> uh so it's just been really funny just because of all the things because i'm like I want to say like this is not this is fiction but to be honest with a lot of schooling and a lot of people like not wanting to talk about stuff like this this is a little too real <laughs> not the actual battle obviously but um, it's just funny so if you want something split get if you want something um very smutty and very hilarious this is your book uh so yeah so and also uh that is a armor so they can't um you know stuff <laughs> this is, i don't know what to say uh yeah so uh i'm gonna continue reading that uh tomorrow maybe i don't know uh i have a doctor's appointment i don't know if i'm gonna take that with me <laughs> uh so yeah so good night and day one is completed woo I just finished Dick Fight Island, this lovely, lovely book. Uh, I all have to say is this is hilarious. Um, there's a lot of sex scenes in here, but technically they don't find it like sexual. It's just more of a, uh, the competition, essentially, because uh, it's literally Dick Fight Island. My favorite scene is the one where uh, he wins one of the tournaments and they say, OMG, he didn't touch his, the manhood. How did you win? Easy. I touched his prostate. <laughs> it's like, what? Uh, so yeah, so they don't find it sexual whatsoever. Uh, it's all just, I guess, a, a competition, essentially. So that's hilarious. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just gonna be drinking my coffee. Eating some snacks. Well, no, not snacks, <laughs> eating breakfast. Uh, yeah. I ended up uh, starting two books last night. Uh, the first one is uh, Jennifer Hilliard, Little Secrets. I'm reading that. And also another one called Red Wolf Thrall uh, by Amy Bellows. Uh, that one is a shifter romance. So I'm gonna start continue reading Jennifer Hilliard, Little Secrets right now. Uh, mainly because that one is really intriguing. It's about like a a support group for parents who have their kids went missing essentially abduction or they've never been seen again and stuff like that so it's just a support group for them i find it kind of crazy because like the first beginning of it like 
how her son gets taken i'm like that was planned man like that's messed up and it's kind of scary because it's a little too real world for me but i'm very intrigued uh so yeah so we're gonna do this and the other one is just this money romance about shifters falling in love in a strip club i have a very interesting taste of um books <laughs> okay so let's continue this day and um, I'll pick another manga later on, probably when I get back from the doctors. back recently from the dentist and running some errands i did end up reading this at the dentist um i ended up finishing the first chapter i was kind of surprised because i was not expecting the vampire to be him i was very the stereotypical wearing all black you know so i thought it was gonna be him but no and also the way the draw his bat form is so adorable I think it's so cute. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's so, it's, the bats in this alone are so cute. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so uh, I've been doing, I finished it. I'm currently in chapter two. He's butt naked right now. And he likes meat. He's not a typical vampire. He uh, doesn't drink human blood. Well, he can't. That's what he said. I don't know why yet. Um, I'm kind of interested. Uh, it's kind of funny because he is American and he ended up feasting on a carcass of a cow and it was essentially a, um, a meat packing plant that was sending meat to Japan and he didn't he was trying to avoid them but he ended up getting frozen with the carcass and so he wakes up in Japan, in this factory, but naked, not knowing what happened to him whatsoever, he ends up going to jail because he's well, he's butt naked. During daytime hours, he turns into a bat, and during the night, he's human. So during the day, everybody thinks that he, he escaped, and the only thing he left is a little tiny bat. And I'm like, isn't that kind of weird? Like that's what he left is a bat. <laughs> like where did he get it? Um, and now he's he uh, was gifted. Uh, to a friend from one of the detectives who basically took the bat off of the officer's hands and basically goes like, oh, he'll be a great pet for my friend, so I'm gonna give it to him. So I was like, what? <laughs> so I don't know if the other guy is a vampire or not because he only works at night as well. And also I also read some of Jennifer Hilliard's book, uh, Little Secrets by Jennifer Hilliard. Um, I did read some of it. I think I'm on chapter eight. I may be wrong about that. Um, that one is kind of messed up, man. Just, uh, because now we are like 15 months after the events of the kidnapping from the beginning. And it's just sad because she's like, just her marriage and essentially what she went through to have her son. And then all of a sudden someone took him from him and it's just devastating. And I kind of, I'm kind of curious because it, she has a therapist that she doesn't want anymore because she told him a secret and she wanted to gauge his reaction to the secret. But we don't know what that secret is. But all we know, it's illegal. Uh, the, the therapist doesn't want her to continue it because it's not safe for her or just in general for other people. So I'm kind of curious what it is because I feel like maybe she might be going after people, sort of, maybe, I don't know. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I have not read my other one, the Fox Shifter one since I woke up this morning. I literally just started reading like three books this morning. I'm insane. Yeah, I'm insane. by him because he just saw him turn into a human from a bat to human and he thinks it's hypnotation what what well, I, 
guess if you don't believe in the supernatural, but I mean, okay, I guess. It's just, <laughs> it's just funny. Oh, this is weird. This is getting weird. I'm very intrigued now. Continuing. Okay, so I just finished The Vampire and His Pleasant Companions. And I really want to read the sequel to it just because it ends with a cl cliffhanger. So the whole entire time um, during it, one of the characters is uh, a police officer or detective. And he, there's like news reports about like a serial killer. And it's kind of hinting that the vampire, but we met the serial killer in the end because our vampire runs into him. Or... Should I say he gets stabbed by him? Uh, so I'm not sure if I want to continue it or do what I want to do right now, which is just read the first of all the series and then kind of go from there. Um, I think I'm just going to continue with the first of the series. And then when I'm done with all the first of the books that I haven't read, I'm going to continue this one. So now the real question is, should I do Scattering His Virgin Possum or should I do Hanger? I feel like maybe I should do scattering first and then hanger because I went for something that was not smutty and the one before that was smutty and the one before that was not. So I feel like smut, no smut, smut, you know, so I'm going to do it. It'll be funny if it's not, but considering that it's saran wrap, I'm assuming it is. Uh, so let me pick it up. <laughs> It's a little later, but on the camera, it looks super fucking great. Uh, so I'm going to make myself dinner. Just finished the first chapter of Scatter, Scattering, His Virgin Bloom. Um, this is actually a Omegaverse um, story. Uh, so essentially, it's like there's six um, genders or sexes. Uh, so you have female and male, and then you have alphas. That are like the top. And then you have betas, which is like the regular citizens. I think that would be me. And then you have the omegas, who are really rare and are usually male and can have kids. So we meet our main guy, who works as a barista. Um, and it's not a Starbucks. It's a star something. Well, what did they call it? Well, anyways, I'll insert it here. And then the logo is a cat. It's really cute. Everybody thinks the barista is an alpha. When in truth, he's not. He's actually an Omega. But the interesting thing that we find out right off the bat is he's not a typical Omega. He doesn't actually know much about his ex. So, uh, and then we get introduced to his crush, who's a frequent person who comes to the non-Starbucks. He basically takes advantage of our sweet little innocent virgin who does not know what's going on. But he's going with it because, well, he has a crush on it. I think this is going to break me. Because I feel, because I've read other Omega verses, I love the Omega verse, I really do. I, I find them so sweet, especially with the whole dynamic where you're my true one soulmate. It always gets me. It's a cliche that I love so much. Um, so I know this is going to probably hurt me due to the fact that I'm assuming probably is going to happen. They sleep together. He's only helping him out during his like heat, which essentially just means that that's the time he can get pregnant. Sort of like a period, but not. Be yeah, I'm not going to go into that. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I feel like he's going to help him out for that because it's his first time going through his heat. And then um, he was pro probably he's going to get pregnant and he doesn't want to tell him. And then it's just going to do like that. Or just a typical where... They're, they become lovers in the end, but they have like a bumpy road because starting off when the alpha finds out that the priest is Omega, who's currently having his heat cycle, he basically tells him it stinks while every other alpha around or and beta says it smells really good except for him. Um, so I don't know how it's going to go. I just know it's going to hurt me because he seems like a jerk. And he probably just want to have sexy time with the other one. It just wants to be loved and cared for. And that thing, I eat that shit up. <sighs> so, yeah. Dinner. And I'm going to read a little bit more. And then I'm going to bed. Because I work tomorrow. Okay, so this guy literally just had a one night stand. 
And essentially, he's like, he kicked me out first thing, but at least I got to take home some chicken. Priorities, my man. Priorities. <laughs> I just finished um, scattering his virgin blossoms and I cried a little bit. This was really sad. Uh, so essentially, he... This is a lot of trigger warning. Um, it's non-consensual. Um, you find out that his he, his brother tried to take advantage of him. Eh, incest. <laughs> oh my god. And then you have him, the other alpha, who basically took his V card and is being such an ass to him, but taking care of him at the same time. And so now he's competing with his with his lover's brother. It's just, it's just really weird. I don't know how to feel. It just made me really sad because you get the point of view of the Omega, the barista. He, he basically feels like he can't be loved because of what happened with him and his brother when he's younger and now what's happening now. And then he's, a, he's having a crush on this guy and basically he's just a fantasy that he doesn't believe he deserves. And so it's just really sad. And I was gonna hold off from reading the sequel to it, but I kind of want to know what happens because he makes a proposal to the alpha to get away from his brother which is kind of weird um but at the same time i kind of i guess it's just it's fiction i have to just remind myself fiction but it's just so sad because he's so sweet and he doesn't he doesn't think he deserves to be happy or have a mate <laughs> Okay, so I got back from work a few hours ago and I've been editing the video that you're currently watching. And while I've been doing that, I've been listening to the audiobook of Jennifer Hilliard's um, Little Secrets. I think that's what it's called. I don't know why it's so hard for me to remember what the name is. Anyway, so I decided to do the audiobook because I just, I, I really wanted to know what was going on in that story. And now there's a plot twist and I'm pretty sure the person who kidnapped the kid is probably the ex-boyfriend mainly because of how obsessed he is with our main character but then again we have the cheater the the current husband is currently well well is cheating on his wife the one and so i'm like it could also be him because there's a scene where uh, we get the point of view of the other woman about um how he had a nightmare about apologizing for what happened but then again it could have just been like the whole apology of like oh hey you know I apologize for not being there when our kid needed us the most when you needed us me the most so I don't know um the characters are very aggravating I do like the main character which is a little weird because I didn't I was not expecting to like her but every other character is frustrating um and then the other thing is i did end up finishing uh, scattering his virgin bloom volume two i didn't really like the second one as much as the first one just the our alpha boy and this is all red flags and then i think i could live without the weird incest <laughs> implications in this manga and i'm like oh my god i just i couldn't it was really cute i did like our homeboy he there's a scene in it which I was just hysterically laughing about um, him having a one night stand and him getting kicked out of the Alpha's house but the Alpha gave him leftover like uh, what was it um, fried chicken because they have like KFC or something and after he's like yeah I got free food <laughs> and I'm like priorities priorities loved it uh, so I might choose another manga I don't know um, because my friend ended up getting the new Stephen King book fairy tale so I might start that instead of a manga but I really want to read another manga before bed so we'll see <laughs>
so I just finished chapter one of Hanger. Um, I know now why it's called Hanger, uh, because it's a futuristic world uh, where they got wiped out by a virus. Sounds very realistic of something we've experienced. And so Japan decided to help out um, the population by giving them a boost um, out of nanobots. Um, so it's like a shot that you take for your immune system, but it's little nanos that basically help the cells. Um, but it had a side effect, and that side effect was uh, addiction. Who would have thought? So now you have a world where a bunch of people now are addicted to these nanobots and basically getting flu shots um, on the basis. So it's just interesting because we meet our main character who has an immunity to the nanobots. He, he basically rejects them, so he can't use them whatsoever. And so he decides to help out the society by being basically a... Okay, so I don't know what his role is called. I can't find it. Uh, but he essentially is in charge of the hangar who uh, is a person who has been convicted and caught for ejecting himself with illegal nanobots. Um, so he's doing his life sentence. And so essentially what he does is he takes down other drug addicts who are stealing nanobots uh, because the more nanobots you end up um, ingesting or basically shooting up on you turn into a berserker which I'm assuming is sort of like the berserk series also it kind of reminds me of psychopath a little bit with the whole like world and like government based like it's the people's fault not the actual government you know no so we just got a very heartwarming moment where our protagonist ended up getting hurt and our hanger did not want to kick butt anymore but save his precious little watchdog because he cares about him and this is a gay boy love story <laughs> uh, so i'm kind of intrigued i think i might stop here for a bit and probably read stevie king or something i don't know we'll see <laughs> by Stephen King and I'm only on page 12 so I'm already feeling really sad. He has a really 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 great talent of doing that and also having characters that I don't care for. <laughs> like move on man move on. Okay let's continue chapter one. Let's do this. <laughs> okay so I'm going to bed. I am tired. Uh, so I read four chapters of Hanger. Um, I'm really liking this. It's a really cool action pack thing. Um, I kind of see where the BL is going to come into with the romance. So can't wait to see that. I think it's more heavy on um, just partnership than it is uh, romance, which leads into stuff. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I'm going to Hopefully finish that tomorrow and then I ended up starting to read Stephen King's fairy tale because my friend um, picked it up finally so well I shouldn't say picked it up he finally got it in the mail so I'm kind of excited I am already annotating some stuff so I'm really excited to see how it goes this is a typical Stephen King book where he's just talking about side characters and you're like are they important though are they but it's Stephen King fashion, so I'm going to bed. I have work tomorrow. So, yeah, let's do this. Wapa. Good morning. Okay, so I have been reading this morning, um, just running a few little errands. Well, not running errands. I've been just cleaning around the house. Uh, just tidying up before I have to go work later today and so I just wanted to give a reading update. So I got to chapter 5 of this. A lot of action has happened and now uh, we know um, why certain 
um, keepers, that's what they're called, that's what I was trying to uh, figure out, um, don't stay long with hangers. It's sexual, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Um, and so it's just really interesting, just like their biology of what's going on. Very fun, robbers and coppers kind of dynamic really enjoyed it and also the quality of this paper feels so good and then i ended up still reading a few well no not a few i read a good chunk of little secrets by jennifer hilliard and i found so the plot twist of it i kind of already figured it out i just didn't know how it's interconnected so when it kind of like told you everything i'm like oh that makes sense so now I have, I believe, like four or five more chapters to go before I finish it. So I'm really excited to see what happens to the child because we still don't know what happens to the kid. But then again, we might never know just because the whole point of the book is um, you don't know what happened to this kid. Like why were they abducted? Um, we already know why. N now we just don't know where they are. Yeah, so I don't know. It's making me really sad and really mad because I, I knew instantly who the kidnapper was after we found out. I just didn't realize how involved they were with everything else. And then after that, just made me mad because I'm like, you're such a bad person. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm going to continue reading some of the manga and then probably start getting like really, really ready to go to work. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to bed. I ended up reading uh, two chapters of Hanger. I have one more chapter before I finish this. Uh, I do enjoy it. That's all I got, just because I feel like I've been saying the same thing. I do like it. The futuristic stuff, um, it's just really sad, especially because of what they have to deal with, because they're technically drug addicts, and once you do too much, you're kind of just like a criminal, so that's just kind of insane and sad. And then I ended up doing uh, 50 pages of Fairy Tale by Stephen King. I am so enjoying this. But look how much 50 pages is. I don't know if you can see that. That's not that much. It's like 8%. And that's crazy. I don't even know how, much, how many pages this is. But I'm taking my time on this. I might do another like vlog on this. Because I just want my reaction to remember it. Because this is such like an old school Stephen King book. If that makes sense. And just like his writing style. And I'm just like it's just giving me like childhood memories of me reading his books so yeah so i'm just enjoying it and i like it and it's so it's so comforting and nothing has happened yet nothing uh but yeah so i'm really enjoying it uh, so yeah so i'll catch you tomorrow good night okay so i did not read what's over today i've just been like not in the mood to read but I wanted to show you what I actually got. I just got back from work. It's really late. Um, so I ended up getting Love Nest, volume one. Uh, Jealousy, part five. Um, I'm still waiting on part two. Don't know what's going on with that. And then this one, I'm not going to even say it. Um, this in the beginning, uh, I did not even have the first one. I thought I bought the first one, but I bought the second one, which was, yeah. So now I'm going to eat Chick-fil-A, watch Shutter Island because that's like my comfort movie, and then probably read the rest of Hanger because I still haven't finished it. And it's not really long, so yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it. It may be some more fairy tale. I'm not sure if I am or not because I kind of want to focus on it and I'm not really in the mindset to do that right now. So yeah. Uh, that is it for this day. Sorry. Okay, so I'm ending the video just because I had a reading slump, so I'm just going to go into the books I actually read this month. So the first one is The Dark One. It's actually a Peter Pan retelling. I ended up reading this book two and three. Really good if you're into the smut and are okay with Disney retellings.
So yeah. Okay, so the next series is Leather and Chrome series. So this is like a lot of smut. So if you're into the BDSM scene or Daddy King, highly recommend. Really good series. Really well written. I finally was able to finish the Simon Snow series and oh my god, it made me so sad. The next books I ended up finishing is The Echo Wife and this kind of reminded me of the movie The Split. So highly recommend if you're into sci-fi and clones. Next book I finished was a manga and it's called Dick Flight Island. Enough said. Next book I finished was Love and Other Disasters. Highly recommend. This is really sweet and it's a queer book so yay. Next book I finished was a BL manga and this is about fake dating and food. Next manga I finished is also BL and it's a mega verse and a lot of spots. Next book is by Jennifer Hilliard. Anything this woman writes is gold. Highly recommend, especially because she knows how to write unhinged women's stories. Next is my guilty pleasure, Shifter Verse, with lots of kink and smutty time. Okay, seriously, can't judge me. Also, my guilty pleasure, my comfort read. I love these 100%. Gives me the fluffy feelings. And last but not least, um, the Lunar Wolf series, this woman right here, Kiki Burley, does a great job at writing shifter stories, so if you want to get into my guilty pleasure, highly recommend starting off with her. Okay guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed my Rio Doom vlog that had a lot of stuff in it, um, and I'm kind of happy I did it, and I hope you end up reading some of your picks, and if you like shifter books, let me know what's your favorite one, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Laters!